Time to get to work if you were hoping to have a luscious and beautiful lawn by summer. But the key is finding something that works for you that also will not be a ton of work and maybe even help out the environment. So experts Dr. Lakshmi Gopanath and also Dr. Kelly Cope from Utah State University are with us today to explain more on how to do this. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. So let's talk a little bit about this because right now when I look at my lawn, it is ugly <laughs> and I know that there's some things I need to start doing right now to get it together. Yes, um, so spring is the right time to do that. Um, so you would begin by choosing the right grass for your lawns. So uh, since Florida being in the southern part of the country, you go for a warm season grass like um, your St. Augustine or your centipede grass, your bahia grass, your zoysia grass and things like that. And then, as I said, spring is the right time to care for your lawn. Where you're seeing your lawn coming out of dormancy, it's greening up, then it's the right time to put down some uh, lawns, uh, sorry, uh, Scott's turf turf pillar lawn food. And if you're seeding your lawn, like if you have, uh, if you're trying to pick grasses like bahia grass or centipede or zoysia grass, you can pick a bag of Scott's turf pillar grass seed. Uh, coming to management, uh, it's always good to mow your grasses higher. Uh, it, it encourages deep rooting and also help your turf grasses resist any kind of stress that's coming its way. All right, great advice. It does mean I gotta get to work though, or my husband, I should say. Um, Dr. Cope, talk <laughs> a little bit about some of the mistakes that people make at this point. Well, one mistake that folks can make is perhaps fertilizing too much. So you wanna be sure that you're using the appropriate amount, especially where you are, there are water quality concerns. So you don't wanna over fertilize. Not only is that an environmental concern, but it's also not healthy for the grass. It can actually predispose grasses to insect damage and diseases as well. So that would be one thing. And another thing I would say is postpone that first irrigation as long as you can. You live in a state as I do where water is of great concern and irrigation of landscapes is also of concern. And so if we can postpone those first irrigations, it will conserve water and it will help our grasses in particular to send their roots deeper into the soil so they can access moisture further down. You know, it's, it's wonderful to discuss because we are looking at being a little more eco-friendly. And also, you know, you think when you see brown grass and it just needs water, but that, as you just mentioned, isn't always the case. Um, so Dr. Gopanath is with Scott's miracle Grow. I want to make sure we say that how do we keep our lawn maybe more sustainable like we were just talking about and make it a little less work so uh, as uh, dr cope was saying make sure that you're not watering it continuously your turf doesn't require that much water it's pretty resilient uh, so have a big intervals between your watering you can see signs of wilting that's when you need to start watering again and go for grasses which are more drought tolerant which can grow really long roots so that it can um, you know grab that water which is stored deep down in the soil profile and then you don't have to mow your lawns that often keep it higher because each time you're mowing you're stressing your lawn so it needs to use up more energy to grow back in so don't mow your lawn that frequently as well you know what I'm pretty sure this. Dr. Cope has more yeah more Dr. things Cope, to add have something else you want to um, say to, to that as well well, you know, I think what I would add to that as sort of a general comment is that, as Dr. Gopinath said, grasses are resilient and they're among the toughest plants we have in our landscapes, which is why we have them. We have them to play on, our kids play on them, our pets play on them, and it's because they have that strength and resilience. And so I think I'd like to encourage everyone and just say that maybe you make a mistake Maybe there's something going wrong with your lawn, but when conditions improve, whether that's because of reduced temperature or perhaps more rainfall, it recovers very reliably. So I encourage folks to enjoy their lawns, not get too stressed out about what it looks like, especially at this time of year, right. and just rely on their natural ability to recover from damage and stress. All right, thank you so much. I feel like it's like a bad haircut. You know it's always gonna grow back. Just give it a little love. All right, thank you to both of you um, for talking with me today. My pleasure.